Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskar from Laravel Daily Team, team of developers who work with Laravel and also educate fellow developers with some tips and tricks. And today the topic is database transactions. And specifically one example which we've encountered in one of the projects uh, where registration has some more logic. So in registration you have two actions in this case. Typical Laravel registration with four fields and also payment. So uh, on registration, someone tries to pay for their plan immediately. So without any free trial or just entering their credit card details, it doesn't necessarily charge them, but just uh, entering the subscription with Stripe. And uh, here we will use Laravel Cashier, default Stripe, nothing really fancy. But the point what I'm trying to show you here is what if the Stripe thing fails? So on successful registration, what you would do, create a user, then try to add the subscription with Laravel Cashier. And what if that subscription fails? Then the user stays in the database with their email, but registration fails. And then if the same user tries to register again with uh, updated credit card details or something fixed, that email will be already taken in the database, right? Because uh, email is unique on a database level in Laravel by default. So what do you do with that? And for that, transaction will help. Let's take a look. Here's our code for register controller create function. And what we're doing here has two steps. So step number one is actually registering the user. And then we're trying to create the subscription with Laravel cashier code. And let's take a look what happens if something fails. So we'll use form filler to fill in the data, but actually miss the credit card details, which won't be present and we will have error. An error is not because of credit card missing, but just I made specific typo, not typo, error. Uh, plan ID is just random plan XXX, which doesn't exist in Stripe. And it throws an error. Now, let's take a look at the database. In the database in users table, we do have that user registered. So if they try to register again, just click refresh. The error will be email has been already taken, right? So how to avoid that and how to roll back basically so the email would be still present. For that, we will do try catch first. Uh, and you should do that anyway with this transaction, with this uh, structure. So exception uh, and on catch, we do throw X for now and the magic will be here so on the exception you can basically you can do this so user delete that's one way of doing that or even better if user then user delete like that let's try it out let's try to register with something else Again, skip the card and let's see what happens in the database. Should be same error with plan and let's see if we do have new user. We still do. So it wasn't deleted. Oh, because I was using soft delete in this project. But yeah, it did work actually. So one way of doing that is to delete the user if some exception happened. But more database friendly way is to use actually database transaction. So we do db begin transaction then if the code reaches the final step, we do db commit. And if some exception happens, we do db rollback. And we don't need to delete anything. Basically, any database operation that happens here would be committed only if it was without errors. So no errors happened. And let's try it out again. Again, register form new data, we click register, same error, and now let's see if our user is in a database. There is no user, so it was actually not committed, it was rolled back, and this is exactly what I wanted to show you here. So generally speaking, that's example for user and email and unique stuff, but generally speaking, you can do whatever logic you have for more complex transactions, for two or three or more database operations 
where some of them may fail. Not the first one, but the second one or third one. And you cannot use simple Laravel validation for that because the error may happen somewhere in the middle or at the end. So for that, you can use transactions to begin transaction and then commit at the end and roll back if something goes wrong. I hope it was helpful. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel. Also check out my online courses at laraveldaily.teachable.com and subscribe to our Laravel admin panel generator at quickadminpanel.com to support this channel. See you guys in other videos.